Welcome in. My name is Katie Lynn and today we are going to do a react on my favorite content creator, Richard Beaumont. He is a pure human design content creator. If you go through his videos, you'll notice that very good effort is put into his videos and um, I believe he makes the thumbnail first and then makes the content because you'll notice him referencing the content or the thumbnail in his content. So I wonder if he watches Mr. Beast. <laughs> but yes, you'll notice that um, he has very beautiful thumbnails and all of it has to do with human design. And you'll notice that over time, his thumbnails actually got better. So like this was like six years ago and obviously his thumbnails are just so like eye catching and beautiful now. Um, when I first started watching him, he had like 15,000. That was just a couple months ago. So that's good for him. Um, what he does for his human design videos is that he doesn't like educate you in a means of this is human design. This is what gate 14 is. No, he talks about human design in a way in which it interacts with our everyday life. Um, so let's go into this video i haven't watched it yet so i will be reacting to it live you'll see that i have watched that 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 and what pretty much every other video we watch these videos as a community because they're just so good hello and welcome to my channel on human design well this is a special episode and um i'm going to be giving you some information uh that a lot of you won't know so before we even go any further, I do suggest following this person. He is a very uh, unique and good source, uh, a good resource for human design. Um, and also we like to rate people's video and audio as well. And his video and audio is great. I noticed that he finally is like peaking our volumes here, which is great. Um, let's listen to what he has to say as well as looking at the mechanics of human design in a particular way. But first of all, I want to thank you uh, for the comments and for the dialogue that took place when I discussed human design and AI. Um, I learned some new things. I followed some links. Very interesting. Thank you. And in that spirit, I want to provide you with some links myself in this video to something that I think you're going to find absolutely bloody magic. So for this episode, I want to go back to the theme of plants. And I was very pleasantly surprised in how many of you really got interested and viewed that uh, first video on the design of plants. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this video, please go ahead and watch it. Um it was a couple months ago and uh, went on to look at the design of all forms not just humans uh, which was the course related to it so well done on that great to see your uptake and today it's uh, just begun to rain after uh, a lot of days of really fine weather and I've been loving it I've been out in the garden doing all kinds of things and this is what I really want to talk to you about. What happens when we do go out in the garden and work with plants? Well, let's have a look at the form of plants. The plants contain three channels. The channel. Okay, so if you actually go ahead and buy your human design um, book, uh, it will have all of the different forms that exist, inanimate, insect, bird, etc., etc. Wow, words are hard. Channel of power, the channel of perfected form, and the channel of exploration. So I actually have all of those. And this is the magic of plants, eh? So is that why I resonate highly with plants? Or is it because of what's on the other side? Now, one of the things about exploration uh, as a channel for me is important because it contains the 10th gate, just as perfected form does. So when I'm around 10th gate people, it imprints me, it 
affects me. Why? Because I have the integration channel, every single gate, the 34, the 57, the 20, but not the 10. So for me, plants bring in the 10 through the channel of exploration and 10 through perfected form. There is a education for me in working for with plants. There really is. And there will, there will be for many of you as well. I know some of you will not be at all interested in this subject. So my dad loves being around uh, plants too. I wonder if that's why. He's an energy projector. And you can flip and watch something else. But, but for those of you who are, you're going to find some very interesting information in this. So firstly, let me talk about the missing 10th gate in my own chart and why it is healing for me to work with that theme and with that energy and the fact that that is actually available in plants. Whenever you have a single gate connected to a fixed center, a colored in center in your chart, you're always looking for the other side. You know, you're here to learn all about the other side, all the different frequencies of what's in that other gate. So what he's saying is that when you have like a gate here, you're really going to learn a lot about that other side, the white. All the different lines you're going to meet in this life. And what is the 10th gate? The 10th gate is the gate of individual behavior. It is also the gate of loving oneself, loving oneself in being able to behave in your own unique way. Now, I don't have the 10th gate, so I don't know how to behave. You know, behavior is something that is of interest to me in lots of different ways. While working with plants, I get to have that energy given to me, that theme given to me while I'm working with them. I want you to think about what it is to be a projector. And some of you will be projectors. But what does a projector really want? A projector really wants to... Who are you and to guide you? To be seen. They want to be recognized. I guess. They want to be appreciated. <laughs> and plants have perfected form as a projector channel within their matrix. I defy any human being not to smile when they see a plant that they've grown from seed become something that blossoms and gives them the fruit or the vegetables or the color or the beauty. You see, perfected form contains within it a freshness. Anyone that has that knows that. There is a freshness. There is a lifting up from the beauty of what comes through perfected form. And plants in there. Honestly, I don't understand what that freshness is about. He might have to explain it in a different way. Um, I have the channel of perfected form. It brings up the freshness. I don't get it. Our own way are perfected form all around us. You know, it is a healing thing for us to be connected with the spleen in perfected form for those that don't have it. It's it's uplifting to see things blossom. To oh, it must be a connection to the spleen, uplifting seeing things like blossom, I guess. To see things move and grow and can be of direct benefit to us, both through the food and the beauty but also in the action, through the channel of power, to use your energy, to be involved in helping the plants to really grow well, in preparing the ground for them, in supporting them where they need it. It's fantastic. It gets our energy going. And the channel of exploration, you learn to love yourself when you're around unique behavior. You learn to love who you are uniquely when you're working with plants. Think about it. You know, you're putting, I put out my energy in the 34, but I don't know how to behave. It is the plant through the, the tender roots when I shake the soil from them or through the structure of the plant that demands that I plant it in a certain way. That I 
So um, I love these beautiful examples that he's giving. Let us continue. I treat it in a certain way that fits with it, that grows. And it's also tremendously rewarding. In the last video... I yeah, so you have to act a certain way in order for uh, plants to work, right? You got to weed it at a certain time, whatnot. Oh, I love these examples. I talked about generators needing to be rewarded for the energy that they put out. And, and in many ways that might be financial, but not in all ways. The satisfaction of using one's energy for something that brings life to bloom is an amazingly satisfying thing to do, as all of you who are gardeners know. And I'm just rejoicing in the fact that I've had a chance to do that in this good weather. So what people kind of joked about with me before, because like, I don't necessarily have a green thumb. I kind of feel like my condition of my plant is like a reflection of what I'm experiencing internally, because as you see, I have all of these channels that they're talking about. Uh, the channel of perfected form, the channel of exploration, and the channel of power. So basically, my friend called me a plant. <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't pay attention to them much. Because the energy that I do put out, and it is for my correct behavior... It will give me power. That's what will lift me up. So I guess I don't necessarily need that connection from plants. My poor plants. I only have one left. One's been struggling for like three years and it officially died. <sighs> poor plant. Now I mentioned there were two things that I wanted to bring to you that may be very new to you. Something that I'm experimenting with. Um, I'm a one three, as many of you know, I'm an investigator, um, discoverer, if I put it that way. And I love to try different experiments with something that interests me. Well, for the last few months, I've been experimenting with electroculture. And this is a way of using copper wire and magnetizing the soil in which plants grow. It's very easy to do. Here's something I prepared earlier. A simple stick with a copper uh, wire run through it. Now I've used three millimeter copper wire. You can use two millimeter, one millimeter. There's all kinds of th thicknesses. And I'm experimenting with the effects of the different thicknesses at the moment. But the key thing is to wrap it around the stick with a point going up into the atmosphere. This is a, nothing to do with human design, but I'm glad that he's passionate to share this with his community and a point going down into the earth you put that in the soil and you watch what happens um, I had a little uh, plant growing on the side of a wall in a little pot I put one of these into that pot and within a few days four new plants had come I had to move the whole thing into a bigger pot and they, they're really growing strongly I include a photo for you to see of what's happened and I'm using copper and sticks and using copper wire in different ways uh, to grow things faster. And it's incredible. I mean, it's the energy of the kitchen where I have uh, some of these plants has lifted tremendously. It, it surprises me when I go in there now because I, oh, this feels good. You know, what's going on? Well, you know, we're taking energy from the ether. We're magnetizing the soil. We're increasing the life force in that room simply your name makes me think of bilingual and sorry i'm recording right now i apologize by using that simple technique and there are other techniques that you can learn about this uh, i'm learning a lot from um, an instagram site called uh, cultivate elevate and i'll put the link in the descriptions below and something else. <laughs> um, this was brought to me by a dear friend uh, a few months ago, and I've been looking into Veda Austin's work. Veda Austin is a water uh, crystallographer. Basically, she has found that there is a direct effect of human thought on water. This is not a new thought. Dr. Emoto's experiences, experiments from a long time ago. But what is he talking about? So she'll have a photograph or something she's looking at and thinking about with water nearby, and she finds that that picture 
of whatever it is she's thinking or showing or looking at is reflected in the water. Oh my when you God. Crystal into the water in a petri dish. What she's thinking about is that shut up. I haven't heard about that one. For about 45 seconds. Just a, the first freeze kind of freezes the frame of thought. I mean, it's an amazing thing to think about. You know, how much of us is water, 70% or whatever of us is water, and everything needs water. And water is that one thing that cannot die. I mean, you heat it up, it turns to steam, it condenses, it comes back again. It's been here forever. And there is this way that humans can actually communicate with it. I know that sounds far out to some of you, but if you check out the link in the description to vedaaustin.com and you watch her video and you go into her site, you'll see what I mean. It's amazing stuff, a real mind opener to the magic that is possible out there that is everywhere. And in all this um, this control and this uh, interference with uh, our normal lives, the food chains and the, uh, the various control mechanisms that are coming. So this particular video, um, quite shocked actually, this is not how he would do his typical videos. So, um... Let's move on. In. I think it's very important now for those of you who want to and those of you who, who are able to, to grow your own food, to become more independent and working with electroculture and understanding our relationship to water. And if you want to go back to Dr. Emoto's research on ice crystals. There we go. He even said Emoto. And putting thoughts into water and seeing the water crystals reflect the thoughts and the energy that we're putting into water. The link becomes clearer and clearer. In my view, Veda Austin has taken it even further. Um, as you'll see, I'll let you discover it. I'll let you go on that journey. It's not for me to represent her work. It's simply for me to point to it and to say, wow. You know, one three loves to be in awe, awe and wonder when the jaw goes, huh? And I tell you, when I watched her stuff and I saw what was going on, it was really one of those. So I want to bring that to you as well. And uh, you can participate in that magic. So really, this is just a plug to return again away from the AI uh, focus back to what really matters to us in our individual life. And that is a relationship with the food that we eat, with the plants that are around us, with the other life forms that are around us. A human being does not exist alone. And a human being can be elevated very easily by the growing of plants in their own dwelling. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, do check out the links. Yeah, so um, we'll do another react in the future regarding one of his videos. Um, but yeah, like I said, this isn't a typical one that he would normally do. He doesn't usually go off on his own particular experiments. It was nice that he did tell us a little bit about his life and like he let us view a little bit of who he is. Um but yeah like i said it's usually more educational so like i said once again threw me off okay once again i'm saying once again a lot you should give this feller a follow subscribe um thank you for watching